We're going to show you a real good, uh, this is a real tactical application of a knee drop Suyanagi. Okay, so snap, snap, and pulls back, and he pulls back, just to get snap, snap. See that nice hole right there? You know, he's giving you his hips, and you can just swing right in with a nice clean knee drop, one arm Suyanagi, one arm Suyanagi. So. You will actually get like a secondary push on it, and if you're doing your job, you get an even bigger throw if it's seamless because you're now using your feet and your toes. So instead of You guys have been around a while. We're going to show you a real good, uh, this is a real tactical application of a knee drop Suyanagi, okay? Or any, any type of shoulder throw, but certainly as a, as a knee drop series. So, hey, come on out here. And real quick, if, you're, if your guy is probably fighting and tentative and he's kind of backed off, and you see this a lot these days, okay? So, I'm, what I want to do is I want to loosen him up. I want to just get him loosened up. So I get my standard grip, I get my kubikata here, all right? and I'm just going to go stab, stab, and then hit. So by pulling on him, doing stab, stab, what's his natural reaction? You pull on somebody, he'll back up, he'll, he'll resist, won't he? And it almost always works. So stab, stab, and pulls back, and he pulls back, just to get stab, stab. See that nice hole right there? You know, he's giving you his hips, and you can just swing right in to a nice clean knee drop. What I'm saying, I what I'm saying, I so. You do that. So watch, watch the guys do it. They'll snap, snap, and hit. See how quick it is? Okay. Yeah, do it from that direction. So watch, guys. Off, even if the guy might be standing up, but a lot of times when they're bent over and crouched, they're defensive, and they're, they're kind of, they don't want to engage. Really. This is a good way to make them engage. Okay. So as you do, snap, snap, back up, and hit. Okay. So you notice the footwork too. As Derek is snapping, snapping, he's stepping, stepping, and then he hits. By doing that, it makes a nice big arc. That, that, like we say, he gives you his hips. And you go right under him, scoop under him, and you slam him. Okay? One more time. So watch how the snap step goes. Did you see what Eric was doing? What was he doing naturally? Resisting, wasn't he? So this is based, you know, we're basing a, a reaction move on his reaction. Okay, this is how we're breaking his balance. It's creating a situation we want to make him go the way we want him to do. One more time from this angle. Watch, watch here, watch all the movement, and you see it. Snap, snap. Bam. The pawn style Suenagi is very quick because you can swing your arm in very quickly. Morote, a lot of smaller guys, shorter arm head guys might like this, but the Ipon style really helps suck his shoulder into you tight. Okay? So, when you just, just do snap without really clocking him. But watch how he does his Ipon Suenagi style. Watch when he comes up under, hooks, and there it is, ready to go. Just suck him in nice and tight. Okay? So that's, that's what we'll do. So, snap, snap, and you drop Suenagi. That's fine. Alright? So, uh, Partner up. The entry now, what we need to, to work on is the, the follow through and that is extended through your feet. So we're seeing a lot of that. Okay, so number one, that's hard on your knees. Number two, I can't drive out of this. So whatever uh, exposure I got, whatever roll I got out of that is dead as soon as the momentum dies from that. Instead, as you're entering in, you are always on the ball of your feet, flexing with your toes. Okay, now, if I screwed up that first part and I need to actually follow through on it, okay, I can because my toes are underneath me and now I can be mobile, okay? I can shift through like that if I had to. So you will actually get like a secondary push on it and if you're doing your job, you get an even bigger throw if it's seamless because you're now using your feet and your toes. So instead of flopping straight down, which is fast, but you don't get a second take. And also when you flop straight down, guys, all the kinetic energy goes straight down to the ground. Right. So you're losing all the power, the torque action you want into the 
action of the throw. Can you so, so watch watch Derek's knees and how he spins under. So foot's in, right? Everybody's got this part, but when we turn through, you keep your, your contact with the ball of your foot. Okay, catch, boom. Now I'm still under him like I was before, but my feet are under me. Okay, my toes are curled. So now I can actually drive. Okay. Can't do that with flat feet. So if my feet are like this, that's all I get. Turn, okay. turn, can you turn around again? So show, show how those feet should not be, everybody. Can you see that? You don't want the feet flat. You want to be driving off your toes. All right, so if I'm flat on air here, okay? That's about as much as I can. Where's his arm? Choking me, okay? Now he's climbing all over me and making my life a living hell. That's where guys will get your back. Yep. So you gotta drive them and throw them and get them off your back. Okay, I got his arm, okay? And I'm on top of him. I'm not gonna stay here, that's silly, okay? But I can transition from here and if he starts trying to go after my neck, Okay. It's an easy turnover into a pin. Plus it's a, a much harder throw. Okay? Make sense? Follow through. Keep your feet underneath you. All right, let's give it a shot. Same drill. Keep those toes in contact with the mat. Okay? Okay. So let's extend that. Snap, snap. Knee drop, say 90. Get your knee drop, say 90, and then go for the hole. Or the pinning, we'll say Kobe. Really, when you throw someone, and, and you don't just throw and have to land on them. You don't want to have to. You don't want to land on somebody without control. You want to throw them with control. You have every intention of finishing the match with a pin for insurance. Okay. So, like, if you're a sambo grappler, you'll throw a guy to get your points, and you hold him for points, and you may be enough, but then you go for your submission. Same as the freestyle judo rules regular IGF judo rules, you'll throw a guy, maybe get your score, you stick him, hold him for 20 seconds, you know, you, you know, you got your win. So, you know, it's, it's, it's insurance. It's an insurance policy. So we're going to show that again. But now after Derek does the stamp stamp, you don't say Nagi, he's just going to pin Eric. That's all he's going to do. It's the only difference you're going to see. Can you do that for me? So he's going to stamp stamp and throw him pin. Right there. He sticks in there with every intention of holding him for at least 20 seconds. Again, in Sambo, that gets you four points. Freestyle Judo, that gets you four points. And in IGF Judo, that gets you any pawn win. So any way you hold it, yeah, and then you go for your submission. But any way you look at it, you're sticking up your time. It's a time hold. It's not just a, you know, on the back like pro wrestling. Yeah, like, there you go. All right, it's a time hold. One more time. And you want to throw, and immediately transition to the pin. Okay? So snap, snap. Deep up, throw, hit. So you want a nice seamless transition from throw to hold it. Okay? And that's where we that's where you see real successful grapplers, whether it be judo, sambo, sport jujitsu guys, no matter what, they're good at this. They're good at this transition. Alright?